Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about power and authority in an organization or in public administration. So what is power and authority? Authority is the force for achieving desired outcome, but only it prescribed by the formal hierarchy and reporting relationship in the organization. Authority is vested in organizational position not because of the personality and personal characteristics of the individual but because of the position that a person is holding. Power is the ability to influence others to modify behavior to achieve stated objectives. Authority is defined as the right in a position to exercise discretion in making decisions affecting others. Line in staff concept. There is much confusion on what exactly is the line in staff in management literature and practice. But line in staff relationship are important as an organizational way of life and authority relationship. What is line concept? Line functions are those that are directly impacts on the accomplishment of the objectives of an organization. Staff concept. Staff functions are those that help the line personnel work effectively in accomplishing the objectives. Then there is a concept of delegation. It is the assignment to another person of the formal authority that is the legitimate power and responsibility for carrying out a specific activities. What is the nature of relationship or a scalar principle? The clearer the line of authority from the ultimate management position in organization to every subordinate position, the clearer will be the responsibility for decision making and effective will be the organizational communication. In many large organizations, the steps are long and complicated. It should become clear from the scalar principle that line authority is that relationship in which superior exercise direct supervision over subordinates. Functional authority. It is important to understand the functional authority. It is the right that is delegated to an individual or a department to control a specific process, practices or policies or any other matter relating to the activities undertaken by persons in that department. The principles of unity of command were followed. Authority over these activities would be exercised by their line supervisor. Delegation of functional authority. One can better understand delegation of functional authority is a small slice of the authority of the line supervision. The chairman or the head of the institution has complete authority to manage organization under the rule of the organization. In pure staff situation, the advice on personal accounting, purchasing, etc. have no part of this line authority, their duty is to offer advice. But when the head of the institution delegates his advisor to issue instructions to the line authority, then it will be called functional authority. They will delegate the fun authority of accounts, admission, administration, and other things to some other then it will be called delegation of functional authority. Benefits of staff. Today staff advice is far more critical for business, government and other enterprises that it has in past. Operating managers are now faced with making decisions that require expert knowledge in economics, technical politics, and uh, many other related areas, planning, development, legal, finance. Another major advantage of staff is that the specialist may be given time to think, 
to gather data and to analyze to advise superiors where is busy managers cannot do this it is rare that operating managers will find time to do analysis which the staff assistant can do as well what are the limitations of staff danger of understanding line authority the advice of staff officer is taken by executive with enthusiasm this may not be acceptable to the line line people because they think that staff has no expertise of work of this line lack of staff responsibility advisory department only propose plans while line has to implement when there is problem in the implementation of the plans the blame is shifted to those who have advised this creates situation for shifting blames for mistakes on staff thinking in a vacuum because the staff people do not implement they only advise so what they advise they are blamed for thinking in vacuum decentralization of authority so this will be focused on the kind of authority relationship such as line staff and functional authority the nature of decentralization organization authority is given to people to use judgment to make decisions and give instructions to the staff for working in the organization decentralization is the tendency to disperse decision making authority in an organized structure it is a functional aspect of the delegation to extend the authority is not delegated it is centralized how much should authority be concentrated in or dispersed throughout the organization this would be absolute centralization of authority in one person but that means no subordinates manager and therefore no structured organization some decentralization exist in all organizations and that is shown in figure the degree of decentralization or centralization would vary from organization to organization centralization and decentralization the degree to which formal authority is delegated by manager throughout the organization runs along continuum from centralization to decentralization what are different kinds of centralization centralization of performance departmental centralization centralization is a aspect of management centralization of performance it pertains to geographic concentration it characterizes an organization operating in a single location departmental centralization it refers to centralization of specified activities generally in one department for example we can say that maintenance for a whole plant may be carried out by a single department centralization is an aspect of management it is the tendency to restrict delegation of decision making a high degree of authority is held at or near the top by managers in the hierarchy